Hey guys, Joe Pye here. Welcome back to the CNC series part six. Thank you to everyone that has suffered through parts one through five. I know some of that preliminary fundamental stuff can be pretty boring. You know, before we kick off, I want to give a shout out to Ray Canelia, Ray's Garage. I want to say thank you to Mike Nixon for sending me an awesome set of coasters. Uh, Randy Richard, thank you for engraving those coasters for Mike. I want to say hey to Pete at Sync CNC. Just got a new 3016 Fidal and hopefully you're going to benefit by this series. Uh, so let's get to it. Today we're going to talk about subroutines. A subroutine is a predefined block of information that you can identify and call up with a single line of code. So if you wanted to drill a whole bunch of parts in a you know, much larger part, instead of identifying all the code for every hole, every location, you identify the code one time and you go put it here, put it here, put it here, put it here. So it can really save you a tremendous amount of uh, uh, line code in your program. And you can use rectangular pockets, circular pockets, bolt patterns, peck drill, center drill, spot drill, uh, mill boring. You can use any type of code, even hand generated code to do whatever you want to do. That is a subroutine. A sub program is just that. It's a whole other standalone program that as you're running the program that you are currently running, if you go, wow, there's something really cool or complex over here that I'm going to have to change programs and run that to put that on this part, you don't have to do that. You can go get that program, run it, come back to your program and continue on. That is a sub program. Now sub programs cannot have subroutines, but subroutines can have sub programs. Now that you're thoroughly confused, let's get to it. After you've identified your program with your O statement and your comment about what the program is, if there's any text in the beginning of the program, and before your first tool call, make a list of, you know, get underneath your, or get on the same line as your program header, and hit insert, hit the I for insert, and it'll open up, and then just put a bunch of these in there. Yada, yada, yada. Whatever amount of sub-program details you think you're going to define, predefine this right underneath the program title. So it's an L100, L200, L300. You can go all the way up to L9900. And that is not 9900 different subroutines. That is, let's see if it was L9900. What does it mean? L 9900. That means it is subroutine 99 and you can run that subroutine 99 times. When you call it out, the last two numbers in the call are for how many times you want to execute that subroutine at the location that you're at. And that comes in handy, for instance, when you have a complex geometry and you don't want to take a full depth bite to make that geometry, you switch over to incremental mode at the very beginning of your subroutine and you step down, you do your cut, you step down, you do your cut, and however many times you think it's going to take to get to that plate or get down to your feature depth is how many times you loop it. So that's what would be right here. If it took seven times to get to depth, well, then you just put 9907 and in your incremental move, each Z zero or each Z incremental down move would be an eighth of an inch or whatever to get to your final depth. When you list your program numbers up here, let's say 0307YT, here's your program number and here's your first tool call block down here. Underneath all of your subroutine calls, it is very important to end the subroutine call area with an M17 and an M30. Okay, those lines tell the executed subroutines that that's it. Don't do anything else. Go back to the main program because these end the block just like an M30 ends your, your main program or will be involved in ending the main program. We're going to take a look at just one of the L's for now. I'm going to erase this. Pretend that it's still here, but it's down here on the floor somewhere. 
And think about that complex, because I'm going to show you, I have a program running right now as we speak out of the shop by making a water pump impeller that's about the size of a quarter. So it's pretty small. And the way we're going to come in on that one is we're going to come in on the leading edge of the impeller, make the first notch, second notch, third, fourth, fifth, come back around and get off the part. At this point it's going to go back over to here, it's going to make the Z downshift and it's going to start all over again and it's going to run around the perimeter of that part four times. So if you want to do something like that, if you're not using a drilled cycle, which is why you need to see subroutines, because you can't drill a hole multiple times without knowing how to call it out. You don't want to call it out several times, you want to call it out once. We'll go to a G91, which changes the whole machine over to incremental mode. And it's okay, it's not going to change everything over to incremental, it's just going to change this over to incremental. Uh, when your tool is approaching your part, make sure your tool is on a zero plane right at the top of the part. You know how to do that. And right here go G1, Z minus 0.1, F25 or whatever the speed you want it to go. So now every time this is called up, this is the first thing it's going to see and it's going to shift down whatever you put here for your Z value. Now immediately after this, don't forget this, go to the G90 that puts it back in absolute mode so all the code that follows that, all of this complex code in here, all the radiuses and angles is all absolute from your offset zero position. Subroutines are very handy to use, very powerful to use. A lot of the pocketing subroutines, the circular pockets, the rectangular pockets are not modal. So if you have a bunch of circular pockets you need to do, you need to reposition that tool up and out of that pocket and move over to the next one and re-zero every time. Or the loop is just going to get lower and lower because of this incremental move and you're going to find yourself milling your vice jaw. I heard that that happened to somebody that we may all know. Uh, drilling cycles are modal. Drilling cycle is just call it up and it will pop the hole in. Have all the retracts, all the zeros, all the... Uh, uh, obstacle collision avoidance is usually there. I will go over that in greater detail so don't run right out and set up a drilling code just yet because if you're drilling a, an elevated boss hub like uh, something from the middle of a mag wheel you're going to want to jump over that hub to get to the next side and if you don't you are going to crash your machine or at least snap your drill off. So let's take a walk out of the shop and take a look at how this incremental and these Subroutines are used and applied in the program, and I hope it's entertaining. Let's take a look. Okay, guys, like I demonstrated inside on the board, you can see that the L100 on line 15 is loop 100 or subroutine 100, followed by the code for deep hole drilling, and then the impeller profile that we are going to cut right now. The G91, you can see, is the uh, incremental change. The Z1 is the depth of each cut at a 25 inches per minute feed rate. And then the G90 absolute positioning comes into play. I'm going to find this tool and we're going to take a look at exactly how this works. And if you want to see what that code looks like, let's take a look at this. <laughs> so if you could imagine having to put that code in there four times you'd lose your mind. Alright, let's see if we can find the 125 tool that that's going to do. And there we go. This is also a good time if you have multiple tools in your program, which I do, and we are on line 490 of this particular program, when I first started programming, I had no idea how to get to that tool and start the program at that tool. The last thing you want to do is run your entire program when you're only trying to prove or test or manipulate one specific tool. Well, at the bottom of your monitor, as you hit the space bar, you see it goes from edit to functions to back to enter next command to quick keys. Get it to where it says functions. Right there. Functions. 
Move your cursor down until it's on the tool call line. You can do that by hitting the D, right? Okay, we are on the tool call line. We are on functions. Now if you hit auto, let's see if that works. It gives you this option. What do you want to do? Start at the beginning of the program or start at the cursor line? Well just make sure your cursor line's on that tool call and hit number two. Okay, it is in auto mode right now and it's waiting for something to happen. When you hit auto, the machine's gonna think about it, it's gonna go through the program and it's gonna look for the code and this guy here should start blinking any second now. There we go. When I hit the start button right now, it's going to go get that tool. It's going to come back and execute loop or sub routine 200 four times. Let's see what happens. Here comes the incremental part of this. There we go. 100 thou shift. It's going to get back in here and it's going to repeat the profile. Now bear with me while I pause this. Slide hold, manual, make sure your jog is in the Z, hit jog, and get the part off the spindle, spindle off the, they get the cutter off the part. I'm going to bring that forward, I'm going to show you how big that is. It's not very big at all, so you can imagine there's a tremendous amount of code in there. It's about the size of a quarter. That is the completed cut, 400 thou deep. There are two sub diameters on there, a center bore. And after you learn how to do your arcs and your G1s and G2s, guys, you're going to be making parts like that. Piece of cake. Alright guys, well I think you got a pretty good feel for how subroutines are executed, how they look. Uh, the M17 and the M30 that I put up there before, make sure that's in your code. Even if you only have one subroutine that you're going to define, that M17, M30 closeout has to be there before the first tool call. If your monitor faults out, if your program faults out, it may be because you called up cutter comp in your tool call, so just eliminate the comp and see if it works. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment line below. I hope you liked what you saw. Hang in there. This series will start getting better. I'm going to start really abusing that machine and making some big chips and punching a bunch of holes. Like, uh, you know, we all like to see machines chewing stuff up, right? All right. Thanks for watching. Do appreciate it. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.